Hello and you are welcome to the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex, your show where we bring you important unstart questions that were asked by the members of the Upper House during the previous session of the Rajya Sabha and the response given by the government in written format. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Akhilesh Suman. So Akhilesh, let's take our viewers through important questions and answers in this edition of Question Hour show. So let's begin the show with the first question that has been asked by member Sanjay Seth which pertains to the Ministry of Home Affairs. And Mr. Seth has asked, what infrastructural changes have been taken by the government for proper implementation of prisoners' conjugal rights in an appropriate environment? Uh, this is really an interesting question, Kriti, because there are very few examples uh, of such a situation when both husbands and wives are living in the same prison. But anyway, uh, the government must have some arrangement for them. So the government is telling that prisons and persons detained therein are state subjects as per entry 4 of the list 2 of 7 schedule to the constitution of India. No such a specific guidelines have been issued by the central government on conjugal rights of prisoners and matters related thereto. So it's an opaque area. However, the Ministry of Home Affairs circulated the model prison manual 2016 to all states and union territories in May 2016. One of the objectives of releasing prisoners on parole and furlough is to enable them to maintain continuity with their family life and deal with familial and social matters. So it's not necessary that uh, the conjugal rights relate to only those time and those situations when both husbands and wife are living in the same prison, but it also relates to the conjugal rights of single person, either man or woman, who can be given and who should be given conjugal rights. So that is the guideline. Uh, now, Kriti, the next question goes to, again, Ministry of Home Affairs. And the question has been asked by Lal Singh Vadodia. And he is asking whether it is a fact that there is no university or college to provide education on policing subjects. Is there any university or college? Well, in the response, the government says that state governments of Gujarat, Rajasthan and Jharkhand have set up their dedicated universities for conducting courses covering the key areas in police services and also internal security. Now, these include Raksha Shakti University, Ahmedabad in Gujarat. The next one is Jharkhand Raksha Shakti University, which is in Rachi, Jharkhand. And the last one is Sardar Patel University of Police Security and Criminal Justice, Jodhpur in Rajasthan. The government further says that it has initiated a proposal to establish the first national police university dedicated to imparting education in policing and internal security by conducting undergraduate, graduate and postgraduate academic programs in specialized subjects like policing science, cyber forensic, risk management, forensic science, correctional, administrative and also criminology. Let's move on to another important ministry which is Ministry of Defense and this question has been asked by member T. Subirami Reddy. And Mr. Reddy has asked about the capacity of HAL or Hindustan Aeronautics Limited to implement the projects that are pending. Yes, uh, Kriti, the question is very important and the answer is also very comprehensive, big answer indeed. And the government says that the present capacity available to HAL is adequate to fulfill the existing orders and projects in hand. Currently, HAL has form orders to manufacture platforms like SU-30, MKI, LCA, DO-228, ALH, Chetak and Cheetal helicopters. As and when required, HAL borrows from banks to meet its working capital requirements. An amount of Rs 8,140 crore has been paid to HAL from January 2019 to June 2019 from different services. Dues of vendors including HAL are paid depending on the availability of funds, prioritization of schemes and advances payments that full due of vendors including HAL. The amount of areas of payment to other contractors outstanding with HAL is Rs. 868.14 crore. The company has initiated various productivity improvement measures through developing robust supply chain ecosystem by partnering with emerging Indian defense manufacturing, private sector, including micro, small and medium enterprises to enable HAL to focus on its core activities. Introduction of digital technology, software tools in the areas of product life cycle management 
and product data management to convert the design data to the production data, design simulator and analysis to optimize development cost and time, enhancing capacity and improving the processes through introduction of new manufacturing technology. The company implemented an integrated software solution that is enterprise resource planning to encompass all areas of production, planning, finance, materials, marketing, and human resources development. This facilitates implementation of uniform procedures and practices as well as providing online information for decision making for management. Strengthening the network connectivity to improve the communication and collaboration services across the capacity. So it was quite detailed answer. And the next question, Kritik again goes to Defence Ministry and the question has been asked by member Rajiv Chandrasekhar. He is asking whether the government is aware of the letter from Controller General of Defence Accounts dated 5th January that seeks clarification or notification dated 7th November 2015 on refixation of pensions under one rank, one pension. Quite, uh, you know, important question. Let's see what is the answer. Well, certainly this is a very important question, Akhilesh, and the government has given a very comprehensive reply to this question, and the government goes on to say that Ministry of Defence Department of Ex-Servicemen Welfare Wide Order, which is dated 14th of June 2019, has constituted a committee under the chairmanship of Controller General of Defence Accounts, which is also known as CGDA, to work out the modalities and also methodology of implementation of next revision of pension under one rank, one pension. Now, the composition of the committee goes like CGDA, who is going to be the chairperson, joint secretary will be the member, additional financial advisor, defence, representatives of the three services, those would be the members, additional CGDA, member again, PCDA, Allahabad, member, and joint CGDA pension, member, and also the convener. Let's move on to another important ministry, which is the Ministry of Jal Shakti, and this question has been asked by member Sardar Balvinder Singh Bhundar. And the question is whether it is a fact that day by day the rivers of our country, including Ganga, Yamuna, and Ghagar, and others are stinking like a sewer drain due to pollution. Yes, the answer is quite comprehensive anyway. Uh, Kriti, discharge of untreated sewage and industrial effluent cause pollution in the rivers of the country and deterioration in the quality of water. Center Pollution Control Board under National Water Quality Monitoring Program has published a report in September 2018 identifying polluted river stretches in the country. So there is a available resources where you can see. The 351 river stretches in 323 river are prioritized based on BOD values in five classes. Polluted river stretches are located in 20 states and union territories, whereas polluted stretches are also located in 28 states and union territories based on different type of pollutions they are facing. So there is priority one and two, and there are priority two and three and four. Cleaning of river is a continuous process. And the government of India is supplementing the efforts of the state government in addressing the challenges of pollution of river Ganga by providing financial and technical assistance. Under Namami Gange program, which is an integrated umbrella program to ensure effective, comprehensive planning and management, a diverse set of uh, interventions for cleaning and rejuvenating of river Ganga have been taken up, which has positive effect on Ganga rejuvenation. These include pollution abatement, activity including sewage, industrial effluent, solid waste, etc., river front management, arrival dhara, rural sanitation, afforestation, biodiversity, conservation, and public participation, etc. So there are many ways the government has taken care of, uh, but uh, this is also stated that uh, this responsibility goes to a state government and central government, both are working on it. And the next question, Kriti, again goes to Jal Sakti Ministry. And the question has been asked by member Rakesh Sinha. He is asking whether the government has district-wide information on groundwater level in the country, and if so, what are the details? So quite uh, interesting question, where is the water, is the major question. In the response, the government says that the detailed district-wise information of groundwater level in the country is available at cgwb.gov.in, which is the website. 
And also as per information received from the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, the model building bylaws 2016 has been issued for guidance of the states and union territories, which has a chapter on rainwater harvesting. The provisions of this chapter are applicable to all the buildings. 32 states and union territories have already adopted the rainwater harvesting provisions. The implementation of rainwater harvesting policy comes within the purview of the state governments or the union territories or even urban local bodies or the urban development authority. The government further says that water is a state subject and efforts to conserve, manage groundwater is primarily state's responsibility. However, other steps are taken by the central government to supplement the efforts of the state government to control groundwater depletion and that is also available at our website which is momr.gov.in. Well, there's last part of this reply given by the government which is on the taxation part and the government goes on to say that the tax rates and supply of goods and services are prescribed by the GST Council but right now there is no proposal to impose any additional tax on water. Let's move on to the last question of this edition of Question Hour which has been asked by member B.L. Yadav and which pertains to the Ministry of Law and Justice. And Mr. Yadav has asked about the reasons for delay in setting up and constituting exclusive courts for upholding the human rights in each district and also appointing special public prosecutors in each of them. Right, Kriti. Human rights are very important in a democracy and the government answers the courts at district and subordinate judiciary level, including special courts and human rights courts, are established by the respective state government in consultation with the concerned high courts as per their need and resources. Under Section 30 of uh, Protection of Human Rights Act 1993, the state government for the purpose of providing a speedy trial of offences may, with the concurrence of Chief Justice of the concerned High Court, by a notification, specify a court of sessions in each district, a human rights court, to try the offences arising out of the violation of human rights. So it can be notified time to time if there are so many human rights cases, you know, uh, gathered together. It is therefore up to the respective state government to decide as to need for setting up of human rights courts with the concurrence of chief justices of the concerned high courts. So uh, the answer is very clear that it is up to the state governments whether they notify and whether they establish the human rights courts and it should be in concurrence with the respective high courts and chief justices there. So this is the answer, Kriti. That's right, Akhilesh. That was the response given by the government. But that's all we have for you in this edition of Question Hour. But on the other side, we'll have Prashnakal with our colleagues Arvind Singh and Preeti Singh. Stay tuned to Radhisabha Television.